Welcome back to Bible and Blues, and uh, we are up to double digits in Acts, which is awesome. Uh, there might be a little background noise. Got my wife watching TV in the other room, and that's okay. Um, if it happens, it happens, right? So, you see, we are back in big screen, back and back where it all began. Big screen, which okay, that wasn't that long ago. Whatever. Uh, it's going to the flannel because it is cold, rainy. That's where I. That's where I live. It's going to be like this for months on end. Uh, we will deal with that as it comes. So without further ado, Acts 10. At, at Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion, in what was known as the Italian Regiment. He and all his family were devout and God-fearing, and he gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. One day, at about three in the afternoon, he had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius. Cornelius stared at him in fear. What is it, Lord? He asked. Can you imagine that? Getting, uh, you know, you know, said, uh, you know suddenly <laughs> out of nowhere, uh, suddenly an angel is speaking to you. Uh, yeah, okay, that's, uh, what, how would that blow your mind? T tell me not below how you would react to a... <laughs> to, to a, a, an angel suddenly speaking to you out of the blue because he wasn't expecting it. He was just going about his day, just doing his thing. Do, 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 do. Cornelius, whoa, whoa, you know, sweat vision it. The angel answered, your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. Now send men to Joppa to bring back a, name, a man named Simon, who is called Peter. He is staying with Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the sea. Couple of things here. Uh, this is something actually, your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. As in, you've been doing so much, so much stuff, God's taking notice of it, especially about you. Um, it says something about being a very giving person. You can, you 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 will get a little more attention, I guess. I don't know because this is you know we we are told it is by faith, not works. But faith without works is dead, right? This is how kind of how it works. I mean, if you if you have faith, you will do the works. Uh, Cornelius did so much uh, that it came up as a memorial offering before God. Other thing I want to note is that something I didn't mention before is that Peter was staying, staying with somebody named Simon, who was a tanner. Okay, whose house was by the sea. His house was by the sea so that it would actually waft away the odors of his place and what he was doing. Being a tanner was not, it was odiferous. It was very, there was a great deal of odor. There was a lot of urine smell and things like that. And you could, if, if you were a tanner, you had a valuable job, but nobody wanted to be around you. So if he, you know, if Peter was staying with somebody like, he, he was staying with a humble person. That's kind of what I'm getting at. Here. When the angel who spoke to him was gone, Cornelius called two of his servants and a devout soldier who was one of his attendants. He told them everything that had happened and sent them to Joppa. About noon the following day, as they were on their on the, their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat, and while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven open, and something like a large sheet being let down to the to earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals, as well as reptiles and birds. Then a voice called to him, Get up, Peter. Kill and eat. Surely not, Lord, Peter replied. I've never eaten anything impure and unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that the God, God has made clean. This happened three times, and, mean, and immediately the sheet was taken back to heaven. While Peter was wondering about the meaning of the vision, the men sent by Cornelius found, found out where Simon's house was and stopped at the gates. They called out, asking if Simon, who was known as Peter, was staying there. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the spirit said to him, Simon, three men are looking for you, so get up and go downstairs. Do not hesitate to go with them, for I have sent them. Have you ever, you know, we've, we've talked about this before, have you ever uh, uh, had the Spirit speak to you? In this, we see very plain speech coming from the Spirit, and I question 
only if interpretation and it's this interpretation of is this it was was peter receiving the words directly as words not many people get the words as words they get feelings they think you know you know inclinations or feel feeling pushed to do this or that um of course he was one of the first to get to, to get the holy spirit so you know we're talking about somebody who was very strong in the spirit Peter went down and said to the men, I'm the one you're looking for. Why have you come? The men replied, We have come from Cornelius the centurion. He is righteous and God-fearing man, who is respected by all the Jewish people. A holy angel told him to ask you to come to his house so that he, he could hear what you have to say. Then Peter invited the men into the house to be his guests. Uh, well, it was a tanner's house, but okay, they did what they did. The next day, Peter started out with them, and some of the believers from Joppa went along. They follow, The following day, he arrived in Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them, and had called together his relatives and close friends. As Peter entered the house, Cornelius met him and fell at his feet in reverence, but Peter made him get up. Stand up, he said. I am only a man myself. This is one of, one of those times where you know, the you know, people wanted to elevate the disciple. Uh, and the disciple has to say, you know, yeah, I, you, listen, I'm just a man. I'm, I'm following the Spirit myself. I'm, I'm following God. While talking with him, Peter went inside and found a large gathering of people. He said to them, you are well aware that it is against our law for a Jew to associate with or visit a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone impure or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without raising any objection. May I ask why you sent for me? This is what he got out of the vision. Um, that you know, the, the whole concept of, of unclean, which was very high in the Jewish uh, belief, uh, he was he he kind of got an un, had an understanding about the idea of impure and unclean, and that God can make it clean again. Cornelius answered, Three days ago I was in my house praying at this hour at three in the afternoon. Suddenly a man in shining clothes stood before me and said, Cornelius, God has heard your prayer and remembered your gifts to the poor. Send to Joppa for Simon, who is called Peter. He is a guest in the home of Simon the Tanner, who lives by the sea. So I sent for you immediately, and it was good of you to come. Now we are all here in the presence of God to listen to everything the Lord has commanded you to tell us. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened through the, throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and, that, and how he went around doing good and healing all who, who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the, of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God has appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everything, everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sin through his name. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. Here ends reading of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, this ending here, that while he was speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message, uh, and this was kind of a, a sticking point. Uh, you know, the, the 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 Jews who were who had converted, uh, 
kind of thought themselves special. That uh, they, you know, they they kind of thought that they were above the Gentiles still. Uh, they could, they had already considered themselves God's holy people or God's chosen people. Uh, the fact that it was still kind of ingrained in them. And this was a good example for them and for Peter, who had to learn the concept of clean versus unclean uh, and you know how this all happened. Um, and so the fact that they were able to uh, accept this and they had to accept it, I mean, here it was in front of them, uh, that you know the, these people, these Gentiles, um, would you know would would hear would hear and, and be and accept and be accepted by Christ. Uh, this was a big deal for them, um, and something we also need to understand is that simply because we have we 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 are, we are following Jesus, we are nothing that special comparatively, uh, in the sense that our job is to make disciples of all nations. Um, my, I, I have my crazy aunt. We all have our crazy aunt. And uh, you know, she she actually posted something about how you know you, you're keeping your religion out of things. And it's like I don't think you you you, don't, you haven't grasped the concept that uh, my faith is in everything. Uh, if I talk to you about my faith, it's because I care about you. If I tell if I say my faith is what's deciding my voting preferences whether you agree with my voting preferences or not, uh, this is, th- th- this is truth. And, um, you know, and another Christian will, will view, view the same thing from a different side. Uh, you know, and they'll, and they'll vote on from, from another direction. Um, and we do, and, and between the two of us, we would have to debate that, uh, as opposed to, because I mean, <laughs> As we all know, uh, you know, you're going to if this is going to drop during the election on November 5th. Uh, probably not going to get too many views, uh, but that's OK. That's not, you know, uh, we're not we're not going for numbers of views. We're going for, for lifting up God. Right. Um, so we're going to you know, they're going to be uh, uh, seeing, you know, you're going to be seeing that you're not going to be it. But um you know, it doesn't matter who wins in the end. I mean, you know, we do have to remember that God is in charge. Um, and the way our, our system is set up, no matter who wins, it's going to be four years, we've got another chance, right? That's kind of how it works. Um, I do pray for who for whoever, whoever wins. I pray for a peaceful transition of power. Uh, no matter what happens, there's going to be some sort of a transition of power, uh, whether it be from Biden to Kamala uh, to, to, you know, Biden to Harris, or if it's going to be from Biden to Trump, uh, it's still going to be a transition of power. So I just always pray, I pray for no matter what, it's going to be a, a peaceful transition of power. I pray for peace across our nation uh, because our na- our nation is very divided. Um, we were once considered a shining city on a hill, and we're pretty tarnished these days. Uh, I think, in in my opinion, um, so. I'm going, to, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, I pray that uh, you get out there and get your vote in. I pray you have the opportunity to. Uh, I pray for, a, for, for uh, honesty in our elections. Um, I pray that, uh, uh, that you, will fi- you will make a choice that is accurate according to your beliefs. Anyway, thank you, Lord. Bye.